In a previous video, we looked at triple integrals over rectangular boxes, and here we want to look at triple integrals over slightly more general regions. So, let's say we've got this region E and it's defined in the following way. So it's made up of uh, points X, Y, and Z, so it's a solid region, where X and Y come from some uh, subset D of the XY plane, and then Z is bound between this lower function L of XY and this upper function U of XY. So I've sketched a picture here. So you can think we're building everything above this region D and the XY plane, which I've put here in orange. And then if you look up from that uh, spot in orange, you'll see that we've got this surface on the bottom, which is L of XY, and we've got this surface on the top, U of XY. So I've drawn them so they look like they're planes, but in fact they could be really complicated surfaces. And this region E is everything in between those two surfaces that's right above this region D. Okay, so now if we want to go ahead and take the triple integral over this region E, we can do it in the following way. So the triple integral over that region E of F dV, so that's our uh, differential volume element, is given by the double integral over D of the single integral um, from this lower function L of XY to this upper function U of XY with respect to Z. So, what's lucky about this, we're able to put a triple integral in terms of an inside uh, single integral and an outside double integral. And I should say here that this could happen kind of in any direction. We could make the shadow onto the xz plane, and that would make let's see, this inner integral with respect to y, and then the outer integral would be like with respect to uh, x and z in the end. And we'll see in an example later in this video of something like that. Okay, so this first example I want to look at is, uh, let's let E be the solid region bound by x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals zero. So notice, those are the, uh, the yz, the xz, and the xy planes. So in other words, the coordinate planes, and then this plane x plus y plus z equals 1. Okay, so let's get a feel for what that picture looks like. So let's go ahead and draw our three space, and notice x plus y plus z equals 1 is going to go through the coordinate axes um, at uh, one distance from the origin. So all of these points 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, and then we're going to be left with this triangular region kind of propped up on top of these uh, three planes. So notice down here is the plane z equals zero. So let's go ahead and label this x, y, z. So down here is the plane z equals zero. Over here is the plane y equals zero. And back here is the plane x equals zero. So our region E is in fact inside of this. So it's like a solid tetrahedron. Okay, and then our region D is going to be down here, uh, the shadow of this region in the plane. Okay, but notice that that has the following uh, bounding curve. So notice down here where this intersects with the xy plane, z is equal to zero. But if z equals 0 in this equation, that tells us that x plus y equals 1. And I'll just go ahead and put z equals 0 here. So that means we can draw just this shadow region, which is in the xy plane, in the following way. So it's going through the point 1, 0, and 0, 1. And then we have this curve right here, which is x plus y equals 1. And then we can shade this in, and this is our region D. Okay, great. So in other words, that's going to allow us to write E in the following way. So E is going to be x, y, z, such that x and y are in D, where D is defined by this region, and then now notice that Z is going to go between 0 and this plane right here after we've solved it for Z. In other words, 1 minus X minus Y. 
And how can we see that? Well, notice the smallest Z can be is down here um, on this little triangle, and the biggest it can be is on that plane, which is like overlapping this thing. Okay, so now that we've gotten our region E like this, we can rewrite this triple integral as a single integral inside of a double integral. So I'll erase that little picture and then we'll do that. Okay, so now we've got our setup in order to write this as an iterated integral. So let's go ahead and do that. We can write this as the double integral over D of the single integral from zero to one minus X minus Y. Um, of 5x minus 3y, and then we have dz, and all of that is within this dA integral. Okay, great. But now, notice that this region D, we can integrate that in any order we want. Let's maybe uh, solve this thing for Y, and notice here we're going to get Y equals uh, 1 minus X, and so what that tells us is that we can write D in the following way. So D is going to be all points X, Y. And now notice that X is going to be between 0 and 1. And then Y is going to be between 0 and 1 minus X. Okay, so we've got that nice description of D, so we can use this nice description of D to change this from a double integral to an iterated integral. So let's do that. So we have the integral from 0 to 1, so that's going to be our x integral. Our integral from 0 to 1 minus x, so that's going to be our y integral. And then our integral from 0 to 1 minus x minus y, and now we have 5x minus 3y dz dy dx. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up the board so that we have enough room in order to calculate that iterated integral. Okay, so now we've worked all the nice geometry out of this problem and we've just got three like kind of end of calculus one problems uh, to do in a row in uh, the form of this iterated integral. So notice the first thing that we're going to do is a z antiderivative. So that'll give me the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 1 minus x of 5x minus 3y times z evaluated from 0 to 1 minus x minus y. Again, that's doing that z antiderivative. And now we have this is times dy times dx. Okay, good. So just to sketch out what we've got going on here, this is going to be 5x minus 3y times the quantity 1 minus x minus y. Okay. And then obviously we'll have to plug 0 in also, but that's just going to give us 0, so there's no worries there. So now that's going to give us the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 1 minus x of, so let's see if we can do this uh, in a nice way. So we have 5x, so that's that times 1, and then minus 5x squared, Great, and then maybe uh, minus 5xy, but then we're going to have another um, plus 3xy, so that's going to be a minus 2xy altogether. Great, and now notice we're going to have minus 3y, and then finally plus 3y squared. Okay, so we've got uh, something like that, but uh, now we can see that we need to do dy dx. So in other words, we have to do a y antiderivative of that. So let's see, that's going to give us the integral from zero to one of, so we'll have five xy uh, minus five x squared y uh, minus uh, x, y squared minus 3 halves y squared and then finally plus y cubed. Okay, good. So now we can evaluate that from 0 to 1 minus x and then we'll have to take the antiderivative of that with respect to x.
Okay, good. I'm gonna clean up the board um, and then I'll bring that to the top and we'll finish it off. Okay, so so far we're at this point, we've gotten this thing down to a single integral. Well, I need to plug in uh, y equals x minus, or one minus x into all the parts here. So that's going to give me the integral from zero to one. Now I have five x times one minus x, and then minus five x squared times one minus x, and then uh, minus x times one minus x quantity squared minus three halves one minus x quantity squared plus one minus x quantity cubed dx. Okay, great. So let's see if we can uh, simplify this a little bit. So let's notice this first bit, I can factor a five x times one minus x out and that's going to give me five x times one minus x, and then I have this term is one, and this term I'll have an x left over. So I have five x times one minus x squared, um, and then notice here I have minus x times one minus x squared. So combining this term and this term is going to give me a four x times one minus x squared. So that's a nice little simplification. And then now also notice that I have, this is minus three halves, one minus X squared, plus one minus X quantity cubed. Okay, so the next thing I can see is that now I have a common factor for everything here, and that is one minus X squared. So I can take the, uh, one minus X squared out of the whole thing, and that is going to give me 4x minus 3 halves um, plus 1 minus x dx. Okay, so 4x from here, minus 3 halves from here, and then a 1 minus x here because we have this thing is cubed. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That gives us the integral from 0 to 1 of... 1 minus x quantity squared, then I have 4x minus x, that's going to give me uh, 3x, and then I have negative 3 halves plus 1, so that's going to be negative half dx. Okay, good. So now I'll bring that to the top, and then we're almost to the, dump, to the finish. Okay, so we've worked this thing down to this point. We have the integral from zero to one of the quantity one minus x squared times three x minus half. And I'm gonna do something that is um, not, com not necessary at all, but maybe we'll simplify the arithmetic. I'm gonna make a u substitution here. I'm going to let u equal one minus x. That means du equals uh, minus dx. So that means I'm going to replace this with minus du. And now notice when x equals zero, that means that u equals one. And when x equals one, that means u equals zero. So that's going to change my bounds of integration. Another thing that we'll notice, if u is one minus x, then that's the same thing as saying x equals one minus u. Okay, great. So, notice that's going to change this thing in the following way. Now I'll have the integral from 1 to 0 instead of 0 to 1. And I have u squared and then 3 times 1 minus u minus half um, and then times minus du. Okay, good. So, but we can simplify that a little bit. So I can take this minus sign and flip the order of integration back. So that'll give me the integral from zero to one of u squared times the quantity. So notice I'm going to have three minus one half. So that's gonna give me like five halves. So I have minus five halves. Sorry, that should be plus five halves like that, and then I have uh, minus three u, du. But now uh, this is easier. This is easier than multiplying out that numerator a bunch of times. So notice that's going to give me the integral from zero to one of minus three u cubed uh, plus five halves u squared du. So that's going to give me minus three over four u to the fourth plus five over six 
u cubed. So what did I do? I raised the exponent by one and I divided by the new exponent um, as is normal with the uh, power rule. Now evaluate that from zero to one. So that's gonna give me five over six minus uh, three over four. Okay, good, so now what's five over six minus three over four? So notice that uh, five over six is the same thing as 10 over 12. So this is 10 over 12 minus nine over 12. So the answer is one over 12. Okay, good, and I think this is a good place to end the video.